Hello, everybody. It's Mike here, Gay from Scratch, and today we are checking out Rocket 3F, a very, very cool free ish 3D modeling application. We'll get to the ish in a bit, but first I want to say this program is excellent. I've had it recommended to me by a number of different people, and I never really got around to giving it a lot of time. I finally have over the last couple weeks, and I have to say I am impressed. I am used to working in Blender, and I could honestly see myself using this for my 3D modeling needs. Now, do keep in mind, this is just a 3D modeler. You're still going to take the results and export them out to Max Maya or a game engine for uh, rigging, texturing, and so on, just for 3D modeling. There's a minimalistic support for material capture and uh, material libraries, so you can do like single PBR style materials on your objects, but that is about it. There's no UV mapping tools here. There's no animation tools, none of that stuff. Now, the next biggest negative, and then we'll go all the positives after that. It's, it's Windows only. So if you're a Mac or a Linux user, unfortunately you're out of luck and it's not open source, so you can't port it or build it yourself. Now, it may run under Wine. If you can get it to run under Wine, can you please comment down below how well or it does or does not work under Wine. Wine's getting better and better at this kind of stuff, so hopefully that's not a huge limitation in this day and age. Okay, without further ado, let us jump in. First thing we're going to do is take a look at the interface itself, and then we will look at the website and a little bit of details on how it's not completely free, but mostly free. So first, you've got your primary interface down here. This is your generalized tools. So you might find this interface a little dog ugly. I kind of did at first, but I got used to it after a while. Now, what I do find is um, it's, it's intuitive enough. You get used to it. Your navigation is all alt-based, so we can switch between... Uh, the front view, the left view, ortho view, projection view, so we can sit here and do a go straight up 3D view. The, the performance is great. There is a renderer built in here. I have no idea what purpose it would serve. If the UI does not completely fit, you can use empty space on it and pan it left and right. For the most part, it does fit, but if you're running on a, a high DPI monitor, it is high DPI aware, but it will also start scrolling if you're on a smaller screen. So you've got your import and export here, which is very important. This model right here, I imported it into uh, this demo and it came out exactly as it came in. And that's important because you're going to be slotting this guy in among other tools. Um, over here, you've got some interesting things. So you can do like symmetry. You can set up a work plane that you're going to draw and snap upon. You do have full snapping tools, as you can see down here. Um, you can also, and this one's really kind of cool. You have manual pivot support, if you wish. And that's kind of one of those things that's almost unique to Blender. So if you like the ability to set the pivot in 3D space simply, that options are there. You can also have them snap the world object um, selection or manual control on the pivot orientation and position. Uh, across the top here, you got your creation tools. You can switch between hard edge and smooth edge. And then you've got your transform widgets. And then here is where you turn on and off your optional pieces of the interface. So you see here, we've got uh, three different panels we can drop in and out. Um, this is, as I said, you could quickly bring in PBR materials. That's uh, this guy right here. And you'll notice my interface clapped down. So again, we can scroll that over. Uh, this guy is your hierarchy or your scene view. So once we go ahead and create something in the world, so here we'll go ahead and create a high density sphere. You can either do an enter or a done click to finish that guy. There's one of those things you're going to like. If you come from a Blender background, it is heavily hotkey oriented. So we've got this guy over here. What I could do is go ahead and... Um, have that in the scene. I could grab and I could create an array of them now. Uh, so I just created 11 off in that direction, or I could do less, or I could do a whole lot more. So let's do 44 of them. So you get an idea. We got now our scene is composed of 44 different objects in the scene. I'll go ahead and do a fit. You can see exactly how big that is. Like so. So it is very um, performant. So we're looking here at 250,000 polygons. I'll hit the Alt key. We zoom around. No problems at all. Also, very important, we have undo support and we can snap back to our single guy to fit it within the viewport. So you have top level object controls over here and where I really love this guy is you've got full tool keys or um, hot key or hot bar, hot bar, um, hot key support that kind of pops up when you hover over anything. And it also shows you the, the applicable hot key. And if there's multiple different options, it tells you how the different buttons and keyboards and interactions work out. So you can pretty much learn this tool entirely through these hot keys, which is very, very cool. So you see here, we're in object mode right now. We could do things like we could cut it. We could create, we saw we did duplications. We could, um, mirror it, we can uh, parent some, so we can have hierarchies of objects that are parented to each other. If you need instructions on how these things work, it tells you the order to do things in, it gives you tips when they're applicable. And then of course we have the vertex edge, uh, edge and polygon editing modes. And once again, you get hot key hovering. So you see to switch between vert two vertex modes, you press one, two, and three, or four, 
that was odd. Anyway, so you got your instructions that all pop up so you can easily learn how to switch between your various different modes and get to learn this program very, very simply. Um, and we can do a bunch of very, very cool things. So for example, let's grab this guy and we'll do a duplicate. So now we have two of them. Let's move that guy over there. So we now have two and let's fit that in the screen. Like so, why did you fit? Oh, is it fit selected? All right, let's do a control A, fit. All right, so we now have our two guys in the scene. Your middle, your uh, controls are all triggered off the mouse, uh, alt. So now what I can do is I could go ahead over here. We can switch into say polygon mode. I switch polygon there. Oh, no, I gotta go back to object mode first. So select that guy, select that guy. And we are going to go ahead and I think it is merge that I want to do. So you see we have two objects. Now we have one object. And then we can do things like paint select in face mode. So go over here to polygons. I can pick a couple of faces over here. Make that firm. Oops. Like so. And then I get over it over here. Hold down. I think it's control. Oh, no. Shift. Pick a couple of faces over here. And then we could do something like bridge. Where did bridge go? Bridge. And there you see. We have now bridged our two objects that are one object. So it is very simple to get things up and going. When we look at the polygon tools, you'll see these standard options you'll see here. We've got things like extrude, pull, loop, knife, weld, uh, slide, uh, local chamfer, which is also your bevel. We got a circularized tool, which is actually kind of cool. So if you've got a bunch of faces and you want to make it into like a circular selection, you can do that there. Um, collapse, uh, space loop. Okay, and then again, for every single one of them, you do see the hot key there. Now, the cool thing here is you've also got your various different selection modes. So if I want to do an edge loop on this guy, it says here, if I want to go loop, I can do that. And then I basically just come up here and double click the next one. And then we have our edge selection. All of your selection modes are here. We've got pattern based selection. We can grow our selection. We have a soft selection option. Uh, you can do straight up painting and then you can control your fall off curve of soft selection there. And we go in here, we've got editing modes for edge and we've got uh, vertex modes as well. And all of the things you would expect in typical modeling are here, including again, some of the things that were from kind of the olden days. So let me just get rid of material and explorer here and I'll show you some of what I mean. So I'm gonna start with a new model. So we had it up to a quarter of a million there for it, no problems at all. So I'm gonna go ahead, we'll do a spline. Spline tools work really nicely. They're, they're actually pretty straightforward, intuitive. Uh, you can change the spline editing mode and the options over at the right. When you're done, just go ahead and click enter or I think it was enter or right click. Uh, we got the various different tools that are available here. We can change up our, um, our spline editing tools all come up on the fly. I could go ahead now that we've created our spline. I could switch into say, sorry, my voice is going. I'll go over here to a two vertical layout like so. Uh, we'll switch this guy to the top view. And now what we could do is go ahead and do an extrude. And out we go. And now we are we can do an object-based extrude. Ooh, that is not the one I wanted. But you get the idea. So basically your, your spline tools work very, very well. You have all of the things you would expect from old-fashioned NURBS modeling. So you saw we had, in addition to extrude, go ahead and create another one. We've got lathing, uh, planner, network. So you can literally just draw uh, a spline as you want. So I could grab this endpoint here and we can just Close this guy right here. I think I can close it this way. Let me just figure out for sure. Open, close. I don't know if that closed it automatically. Anyways, once you got it, you could base, or I could have done my spline in one fell swoop and closed it during creation, like so. Close that spline, and then I can immediately just turn that spline into a mesh. And so there, there was those kind of tools that were around from before that sort of faded a bit or they're a little bit more obscure and I missed them if I'm honest about that. So let me just switch this guy back to 3D view. I do wish it switched into 3D view automatically when you tried to rotate out of uh, a, a defined view like front, right, and top. Unfortunately, it doesn't. But you do have all of your typical 3D tools are here um, and, and you'll be shocked by just how capable this tool actually is. You can do some very, very cool work uh, very, very quickly. Now, another thing you'll notice down here is we've also got Keyshot uh, MOI or MOI and 3D Coat bridges. So if you're working in one of those applications, you can have it automatically sent over uh, with a one-click kind of selection and it'll send the object selected over to that application for finishing. And you could then obviously use uh, 3D Coat for your texturing purposes, for example. Uh, so. 
This is a quick, brutal overview of it, and I am not doing it justice, to be honest, but I, I can't go through all of these things. But you'll see, pretty much, if you think of a tool that you want to be in here, it's probably here. Um, and then once you've got, you want to see what your results look like. You've also got, again, ambient quick render options. You do have a full render, which, as I mentioned earlier, is, is kind of useless, but it's there. So if I wanted, I could put a I can put a character on that guy. Well, let's make this thing bluish. I can add a light to the scene, and then we can render it. And we'll give it some time. Render is not the quickest thing in the world. Actually, I may have may have triggered that off a couple times. So we'll we'll skip that. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, anyways. And I don't under oh, I'm still in selection mode for a tool. Uh, yeah, I've made things unhappy. One sec. All right, so I just killed that. That's the easiest way to do things. So here we are now at the Rocket website. This is rocket3f.com. Um, you see here, you can buy it. We'll get to, actually, let's do that now. So if you do buy it, the way it works basically is there is a basic version. You own it forever. It is completely free. So it's a lifetime license, one time. This is not a subscription-based product. But the key things is you can't customize the tools, you can't change the hotkeys, and you can't customize the UI. Those are the things you get in the pro version, and they are 80 euro. And I think that is probably among one of the most fair premium models I have ever seen, to be honest. So everything we saw, everything we just did, everything we want to do is completely available in the free model, except for this customization stuff. Now, I should point out before we get too much further in, this guy is actually built on another application called Nivel, or N NVIL anyways, and it itself was based off of another application called Void World. So this is kind of, that NVIL one, it, the user interface is god awful. So now we can see some of the stuff that we can do here. So scroll on down, we have the user interface with the uh, change, I don't, yeah, so you need to have the pro version to change out the theme. So this is the kind of stuff you can do. You make it look different, you can dark mode it, you can change up things. Um, You've got multiple different workflows, modeling methods, uh, really cool extrusion tools, push-pull kind of stuff. This is actually not an easy thing to do that you just saw done right there, that kind of pulling into the model and having all the other stuff go away. That is kind of a rarish kind of thing. You've got creasing tools. We've got draw mesh tools, which is also really cool. This is for doing uh, easy retopo. So once you've got a very high dense version, you can draw directly on that surface using splines. Very easy freehand spline drawing and it will automatically create you a nice polygonal mesh for, again, retopology for making a lower polygon version of your scene. You got pattern based selection. You've got, yeah, so we see various different patterns. You got a renderer, which I didn't demonstrate that well. It actually does decent results. I just don't understand the point of it. Oh, and I didn't show sculpting. Damn it. Yeah, it's also got full sculpting. I got to go back and show you that for sure because that's kind of important. So let's bring up Rocket 3F again. Um, there is one huge flaw in the sculpting, but otherwise it works quite well. There is the quick renderer. I kind of showed you that. Um, so you can sort of see how your, your end results are going to work before they finish. You got hard-edged or smooth-edged subjects. Um, you got bridges to the various different applications, like I mentioned earlier. You have the hierarchy view that we saw earlier on, so where you can pair objects together. Um, and then you've got these custom tool support, so you can actually customize the hell out of everything. Sort of like the level of customization you see in Blender. Um, there are thousands of tools that come with NVIL. Also, you can create your own tools without knowing any scripting language. It is simple with Rocket 3F. So this is the kind of advanced functionality you get in the full version. But it, it does have pretty much every feature that I would expect from a modeler, to be honest, except one. And I don't understand this. So let's go ahead, we'll come back here, and we'll create another sphere. Draw that in the scene, and then let's get into the sculpting tools here. So you can see there are tools such as move tool, like that. Uh, you can do a control and then wheel to change the size of your influencer, like this. You have a pull tool. Which I am finding kind of paradoxical. You have a flatten tool for pushing things back in, like so. You have an inflate tool for, well, inflating. And you have a pinch tool for, well, pinching. So you've got most of your modeling tools, but there are some glaring exceptions here. Plus, I don't really understand the point of pull. Uh, but what really gets me, and if we hover over, it will probably explain. So you see there um, how you've got your different controls. So scroll, uh, or so like you see here, press down the Alt key before the cursor is dragged to have the opposite effect. So if you want to push, I guess, Again, I don't get the the behavior of it. The nice nice thing here is you can often have um, the commands are shown right here. So left mouse button to do move, 
uh, inflate, you see here, sort of inflation and so on. What I find very, very, very odd, there's no relax or erase. Uh, so I, I don't know how to like smooth. Uh, the lack of a smooth tool is probably the most perplexing thing. But as you can see, the, the tools work. Um, just fine, the performance is great. So there is also a level of sculpting here as well. The nice thing that I found is also, these are all, nothing here is generating geometry. So these tools are mostly designed to, um, you know, tweak the thing that you've already modeled yourself. But I did feel I should definitely showcase the, the sculpting stuff before moving on. And that is it. I'm kind of mangling my way around this program in this demonstration, because again, I don't have a huge amount of experience with it, but the most important thing I think I can say right now is what I have seen has encouraged me to spend some time in it and see if my workflow actually improves over that that I'm used to in Blender. And again, it is completely free to do 90% of stuff. And the other stuff that's locked away behind a paywall, the customization stuff, well, that's the kind of thing that once you've decided that this tool is right for you, then it all makes sense. But you get a full kind of gamut of what the functionality is without ever even thinking about that paywall. That's kind of only for advanced users. If you like the program exactly how it is, you don't need any of that, which is really kind of does. It is one of the best premium models I have seen. I am impressed by the way they have monetized this application. So that is it. That is Rocket 3F. Unfortunately, as I said, I can't do it in extreme amount of justice because I haven't had enough hands on time to really make it shine. But what I have experienced, I have highly recommended. Again, the interface at first glance is going to be a little bit bleh. And again, this is just for modeling. But if you take those limitations into account and you give it some time to get used to it, I think you will really be charmed by Rocket 3F. I certainly was. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.